Jack Mollenkoff's 1968 Purdue football team continued to be one of the powers of the nation. Their final 8-2 record gave the seniors on the squad a three-year win total of 25 victories in 31 games and tabbed Purdue as the winningest team in the traditionally tough Big Ten over the last three seasons. The Boilermakers and the Notre Dame Irish met in South Bend, Indiana in the Pole Bowl Battle of 1968. Notre Dame won the toss and elected to receive, but the Boilermakers scored first on a 34-yard field goal by Jeff Jones. Notre Dame scored a touchdown and then kicked off to the Boilermakers' Jimmy Kirkpatrick on his own five-yard line. Kirkpatrick returned to the Purdue 26-yard line and the Purdue drive started there. On the first play from scrimmage, Mike Phipps throws a pass to Bob Dillingham, which is the first of 11 receptions by Bob that day. With first and 10 on the Purdue 37-yard line, Phipps hits Dillingham again. In Notre Dame territory at the Irish 48-yard line, Phipps drops straight back, throws left, and Dillingham catches the ball in the Notre Dame 37. After one ground play, Phipps drops back once more, then throws out to the right to Leroy Keyes, who's pulled down in the Notre Dame 25-yard line. Again, Phipps looks for a receiver, but this time elects to run. He's finally stopped inside the Notre Dame 20-yard line at the 18. Williams picked up two yards, then Keyes takes a handoff from Phipps and sweeps left end for the Purdue touchdown that gives the Boilermakers the lead, 10 to 7. Still in the second quarter, Terry Hanratty drops back to throw for the Irish. Billy McCoy tips the pass, and Bob Unaska picks it off for Purdue. He runs down the sideline and is stopped at the Notre Dame 30-yard line. With first and 10 on the 30, Phipps drops back beyond his own 40-yard line and hits Jimmy Kirkpatrick, who's brought down at the Notre Dame 21-yard line. On second and one, Perry Williams takes the ball and hits to the Notre Dame 17. For the first and 10 on the Notre Dame 17-yard line, Leroy Key starts to sweep left, then passes into the corner of the end zone where Bob Dillingham hauls it in for another Purdue score. That gave Purdue a 17-7 lead in the second quarter. Following the Purdue kickoff, Terry Hanratty hands off to Bob Gladjo. The ball is punched away, and Gladjo's fumbles recovered by Bill Yanchar of Purdue on the Notre Dame 41-yard line. Once more, Phipps drops back on first and 10 and throws a long pass to Dillingham inside the Notre Dame 20. The first down on the Irish 16-yard line, Phipps spots Dillingham again, this time out to the right, and hits him for a touchdown for the Boilermakers. And now the score is Purdue 23, Notre Dame 7. Late in the third quarter, with Purdue leading in the ballgame by a 23-14 count, Phipps again takes to the air. This time his pass out from the right flats complete to Perry Williams. Perry, with a strong second effort, carries inside the Notre Dame 30. Three plays later, Phipps drops back, spots Keys open up the middle, and hits him for a first down on the Notre Dame 18-yard line. On the next play, which was the first play in the fourth quarter, Keys cuts inside left end and goes 18 yards for another Purdue touchdown that makes the score 30 for Purdue, 14 for Notre Dame. Trying desperately to get the Irish back into the ball game, Hanratty once more drops back to pass. This time, senior halfback John O'Reilly intercepts for the Boilermakers at the Notre Dame 31-yard line. On first and 10, Keyes again cuts over left tackle, reverses his field, and is pulled down at the Notre Dame 18-yard line. On first down, Phipps pitches to Perry Williams, who sweeps right, Cuts inside and goes untouched for the last Purdue touchdown that made it 37 for the Boilermakers, 14 for the Irish. 
The last Notre Dame touchdown made the final score, Purdue 37, Notre Dame 22. Offensive-minded Iowa invaded ross Age Stadium as the Boilermakers were on the hunt for their second Big Ten win of the season. The Boilermakers scored first, but Iowa came back to lead 7-6 on a touchdown early in the second quarter. With Iowa in possession on the Purdue 36-yard line, Larry Lawrence dropped back to pass. Halfback John O'Reilly intercepts for the Boilermakers. And is finally forced out of bounds at the Purdue 40-yard line. On the next play, Keyes takes a keeper pitch and skirts right in for eight yards. Three plays later, Keeper again pitches to Keyes, who cuts inside right end, finds daylight, and goes all the way down the sidelines for a 51-yard touchdown run. This score gave Purdue the lead over the Hawkeyes, 12 to 7. Once more, Lawrence drops back to pass and is pressed by Kyle into fumbling the ball. Alex Davis finally corrals the ball for Purdue on the Iowa 43-yard line. With first down at the Iowa 43, Kiepert gives the ball to Keyes, who cuts to the outside and gets to the Iowa 34-yard line before being brought down. Purdue chalked up two more first downs, then with third and six on the Iowa 15, Kiepert hands off to Perry Williams, who goes over left tackle and is knocked down at the Iowa one-yard line. With first down at the one, Kiepert sneaks for the touchdown that puts the Boilermakers ahead, 18 to seven. Trying for two points after touchdown, Kiepert pitches back to Keyes, who hunts a receiver in the end zone and hits Marion Griffin for the two points that brings the halftime score to 20 to seven. In the third quarter with second and five, Perry Williams picks up seven yards and a first down for Purdue on the Boilermaker 20. On first and 10, Kiepert hands off to Jim Kirkpatrick, who gains seven yards to the Purdue 27. After another first down, Williams again carries over right tackle for eight. Three plays later, Leroy Keyes cuts inside left end and picks up seven more yards for the Boilermakers to the Iowa 36-yard line. The Boilermakers stayed on the ground for another first down, and with first and 10 at the Iowa 24, Keyes cuts inside left end and goes to the Iowa 11-yard line. On fourth down, Leroy once more cuts inside left end for another Boilermakers score that moves the tally to Purdue 26, Iowa 7. Following this touchdown, Purdue's defense forced an Iowa punt, and the Boilermakers advanced the ball to the Iowa 27-yard line. Then Keyes cuts inside left end and runs to the Iowa 13-yard line. Kiepert hands the ball to Jimmy Kirkpatrick on the first down situation, and Jimmy K slants right to the Iowa 6. On the second and three, Kiepert pitches to Keyes, who hits inside left end again to the Iowa two-yard line. On the next play, Kiepert pitches to Kirkpatrick, who cuts right and slips inside for another Purdue score, making it 32 to seven in favor of Purdue. In the fourth quarter on a third down situation, Larry Lawrence drops back to pass. Don Webster's tackle knocks the ball loose. Chuck Kyle picks it out of the air and returns to the Iowa 32 yard line. Following a five yard gain by Kirkpatrick, Bullock takes the ball for the Boilermakers over left guard to the Iowa 20 yard line. Bullock carried again for two, and then Kiepert gives to Perry Williams, who gets to the Iowa 10 for another first down. On the second of two consecutive carries, Jimmy Kirkpatrick gets inside left end and goes six yards for another Purdue score to make it Purdue 38, Iowa 7. Late in the fourth quarter, following a fumble recovery by Dick Takavik of Purdue, Kiepert hands to fullback Leon Troyer. Troyer goes inside and up the middle for a 16-yard gain to the Iowa 17. Stan Brown takes the pitch out on the next play and picks up nine yards to the Iowa eight-yard line. Three plays later, Brown again carries, 
cuts left, and goes for the last Purdue touchdown of the day. Following a kick by Wargowski, the score is Purdue 44, Iowa 7. Purdue won the toss for the Illinois game and elected to receive. Following the kickoff return by Kirkpatrick and two ground plays by Leroy Keyes, the Boilermakers on third down call on Keyes. Leroy goes over right tackle for nine yards and a first down at the Purdue 41. Two plays later with third and five, Jim Kirkpatrick on an inside reverse cuts outside, goes up the east sideline and carries to the Illinois 35 yard line. With an ensuing first down on the Illinois 24 yard line, Perry Williams cracks over right guard for seven yards to the Illinois 17. On second and three, Kirkpatrick gets outside right end, and rams his way for a first down to the Illinois four yard line. On second and one, Williams hits in for the score that gives Purdue the quick lead, seven to nothing. At the start of the second quarter with Purdue leading 7-3, Keyes scoots inside left end and goes all the way to the Illinois 11-yard line before being forced out of bounds. Kirkpatrick picked up three and Keyes again takes the pitch, hits right, and goes in for an eight-yard touchdown run. This made the score Purdue 14, Illinois 3. On the next to the last play in the third quarter with Purdue leading 28 to 11, Perry Williams carries for the Boilermakers, gets loose over right tackle, and goes 39 yards to the Illini 22-yard line. Two plays later in the fourth quarter, Perry again finds a hole over right tackle and goes to the Illinois 8-yard line. With a first down for the Boilermakers, Kiefert pitches to Keyes, who cuts inside end and is forced out of bounds on the Illinois one. Keepert sneaks for the score that brings the total to 35 for Purdue and 11 for Illinois. Purdue's highly successful 1968 season was marked with some fine defensive football. With the first down on the Purdue 19 yard line, Illinois' Naponic passes to Burns, who stopped by Randy Cooper for a three yard gain. On the next play, Naponic's pass to Deacon is tipped by Chuck Kyle and falls harmlessly. With third and seven, the Illini right tackle moves and an alert Boilermaker defender crosses the line, gaining a five-yard penalty against the Illini. With third and 12 with their own 21-yard line, Naponic passes to Burns again on the Purdue 11-yard line. With fourth and two at the Purdue 11, Bargo tries for the first down but is stopped by Unaska and Kyle, and the Boilermakers take over. In the old open bucket game against Indiana University, the Boilermakers sought to avenge last year's loss. Indiana jumped into a quick lead, but a Hoosier fumble was recovered by Don Webster on the Purdue 31-yard line. On the second play after the fumble recovery, Phipps drops back to throw and hits Leroy Keyes for a 13-yard gain to the Purdue 48-yard line. After a pass interference call against Indiana, Keyes takes the pitch, cuts wide right, and scampers 41 yards down the sideline for a Purdue touchdown that ties the game at 7-7. With Purdue trailing 28 to 10 in the third quarter, Perry Williams slants outside right tackle and is finally forced out of bounds on the Purdue 37 yard line. Six plays later on third down with 12 yards to go, Mike Phipps drops back, throws a long bomb to Leroy Keyes. Keyes makes the catch at the 12 and is finally pulled down on the Indiana six. With second and two on the Indiana two, Perry Williams cracks in over left guard for the touchdown that makes the score Indiana 28, Purdue 17. In the fourth quarter with the first down on their own 32-yard line, 
The Boilermakers' Mike Phipps throws a pass to Bob Dillingham, who's knocked out of bounds at the Indiana 38-yard line. Two plays later, Phipps again throws a pass, this time to Mike Engelbrecht. Mike gains 21 yards to the IU 16. Again, Phipps goes to the air. This time his target is Bob Dillingham, who is stopped at the IU 3. Two plays later, Leroy Keyes gets the assignment to carry for the touchdown that makes the score Indiana 28, Purdue 24. After an Indiana touchdown that made the score 35 to 24 in favor of the Hoosiers, and with the ball on the Purdue 44-yard line, Phipps drops back, is chased wide right, and throws a running 60-yard pass to Leroy Keyes for another Purdue touchdown that brought the Boilermakers within striking distance. Late in the fourth quarter, following an Indiana punt, the Boilermakers had first down on their own 23-yard line. Phipps drops back and fires a pass to Dillingham at the Purdue 36-yard line. On the next play, Phipps throws right to Leroy Keyes, who carries for a 14-yard gain. With first and 10 on the Purdue 49, Phipps again throws to Keyes, who takes it to the IU 39-yard line. With another first down there, Phipps hunts for Dillingham and hits Bob on the east sideline at the IU 31. Three plays later, Phipps spots Greg Fenner open in the middle and passes to him for a first down that carries to the IU one-yard line. On the next play, Leroy Keyes takes a handoff from Phipps and smashes through the middle for the winning touchdown that made the final score Purdue 38, Indiana 35. Here are three great performers leaving the field for the last time for the Boilermakers. Leroy Keyes, Perry Williams, and Bob Dillingham. The victory bell signals another Purdue link on the old open bucket chain and rings the end to an excellent 8-2 season for Purdue's football team.